Good morning. Welcome to Bethany. I'm John Leary, a member of the Bethany community. As you all know, we are worshiping at a unique and challenging time, but I'm so glad you decided to spend that time with us. So wherever you're in your PJs or sweats, dressed up because it is Sunday, we are delighted that you are here. No matter who you are, where you are, your gender identity, your sexual orientation, your race, whether you're a longtime believer, a seeker, a doubter, you are welcome at Bethany, today and every day. Normally, right now, we greet one another. So take a moment and do that in the comments below. Say hello, good morning, peace be with you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. If you hear nothing else this morning, this is the most important thing. You are a child of God, holy and beloved. Nothing, nothing can take that identity away from you. When we say this, we are also saying that each and every one of us is a child of God. Our task is to honor the image of God in ourselves and yes, in each other. So say it with me. I am a child of God, holy and beloved. Pastor Sarah asked me to share something that's given me life or something I'm struggling with and a way I see God is showing up. So I wanted to share this with you for just a moment. Last year, approximately this time, I was hung out, struggling. Gave up on God, gave up on heaven, gave up on everything. Because I was in a church that was wrong, and I didn't know it. And I finally got up the courage to leave. And I took my wife with me and we walked out. It took us a while and we moved through basically all of the local churches in the neighborhood except for one because we didn't know it was there. And somebody clued us in, hey, have you tried Bethany? And I said, no, I haven't tried Bethany. And we walked in the first Sunday and it was like coming home after a long vacation. The warmth that we got from the people that were here, even though we were strangers and had never been here before, and the message that Sarah preached that day took me totally by surprise. And I thank God every day we have been here now almost two years. And Sarah, Jesus through you brought us home. And for that, we are eternally grateful. <coughs> Come thou, almighty King, help us thy name to sing, help us to praise, Father,
have the gift of having Gwen with us. I'm going to have John head back because he's going to sing with me again. We've got the joy of having Gwen Saylor with us today on the organ. She's also going to be offering special music, so I'm just going to have her wave hello. <laughs> no, she's going to come out. She's coming out. <coughs> hello. <laughs> Hi. I'm going to be playing Be Thou My Vision, that wonderful Irish prayer. And um, uh, I love that because the words talk about God being with us, giving us light and vision day and night, and uh, waking and sleeping. Thank you, Gwen. Mm -hmm. So she'll be playing that a little bit later. Uh, for now, John and I will do a piece that he picked, uh, we picked together. And um, I think the words are really beautiful. And we finally have some organ back in our church. It's been quite a while since we've had some organ. And did you want to say something else, John? We are doing our uh, O for a Heart Prepared to Sing. Okay, very good. This is probably a hymn that most of you will not have heard. It is a traditional Southern Baptist hymn. And it comes out of the South. So we hope you enjoy it. Good morning. 
It is so good to be with you again this morning. We have a children's time from Kayana. I believe we are blessing backpacks and computers and however you are learning and working from home. So I will turn it over to Kayana. Hi, Bethany. Uh, I hope you're well. I miss your faces. Um, today we are not reading a story. Uh, we are going to do a blessing of the backpack, just like we do every year before school starts. Except for this year, it may not be a backpack that we're blessing. It might be a laptop for virtual learners. It might be your homeschool books. It might be your work bag, whatever you're using this year. Please go grab it and have it with you so we can all say a prayer together. I thought it would be nice to remember that even though we're apart, that we are still rooting for one another and we hope that we have the best year together learning and working. So once you have your bag and your book, let's put out our hands just like we're reaching out to one another and let's say a quick prayer. God, I pray for everyone that is learning this year, everyone going to school, no matter how they're schooling, maybe they're starting a new school, maybe they're doing virtual schooling, they are going to private school or home school. There's so many different ways people are trying to learn this year in such a strange new world. Um, I pray for the teachers that are working in classrooms that are so different with masks and uh, social distancing. I pray for the teachers that are virtual learning, teaching this year that uh, that is so hard, and I pray that they're able to pull their classroom together. They're still going to be able to meet the needs of their students and meet the needs of themselves, Lord, that they still are able to have peace and rest. And I pray for the children that are learning, Lord, I pray that they can do, um, still have some social time and still feel connected to their friends. I pray for those that are struggling, missing their friends this year so badly and so wanting to be back at school. I pray for those that are um, struggling with just ha being able to virtual learn, maybe with a laptop that they need or internet that they need. I pray that you get their needs met. Um, and I pray for all the parents that are struggling in a new school year with new responsibilities maybe that they're working and they don't know how they're going to juggle this. Lord, I pray that your peace is with them. Um, amen. Okay, Lucy, did you want to say something you want to pray for? I pray for that we could, I pray that we will have a fun day and we will all be the Children, if you have any prayers today or parents, please vocalize them now. Let's pray together. Okay. Yeah, that was scary. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful year and we'll see you next week. Bye. Our scripture for today is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, from chapter 1, verses 2 through 11. Paul writes, May the grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I thank my God every time I mention you in my prayers. I'm thankful for all of you every time I pray, and it's always a prayer full of joy. I'm glad because of the ways you have been my partners in the ministry of the gospel from the time you first believed it until now. I'm sure about this. The one who started a good work in you will stay with you complete the job by the day of Christ Jesus. I have good reason to think this way about all of you, because I keep you in my heart. You are all my partners in God's grace, both during my time in prison and in the defense and support of the gospel. God is my witness that I feel affection for all of you with the compassion of 
Christ Jesus. This is my prayer, that your love might become even more and more rich with knowledge and all kinds of insight. I pray this so that you will be able to decide what really matters, and so you will be sincere and blameless on the day of Christ. I pray that you will then be filled with the fruit of righteousness, which comes from Jesus Christ, in order to give glory to God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Paul says it so well. I was tempted to just get up and read this and let it stand on its own. He says, I thank my God every time I mention you in my prayers. I'm thankful for all of you. I didn't think I'd start crying this early. I'm thankful for all of you every time I pray. And it's always prayers full of joy. I'm glad for the ways you've been my partners in the gospel. I'm sure about this. The one who began good work in you will bring it to completion. I keep you in my heart. This is my prayer for you. That your love might become more and more rich. If nothing else, Paul was a writer. We remember him for being rough around the edges, sometimes argumentative, but he was first and foremost a writer, and he loved his churches through his writing. The letter to the Philippians is actually a collection of letters that they folded together and edited into one. He wrote them while he was in Rome in prison. And the church in Philippi gives him so much joy that he writes with this delight even from prison. I have never been to prison, and I hope I don't ever have to go. But I can only imagine how much joy I would have to write to you from there. If you are worshiping with us today for the very first time, you could not find a better church home than Bethany Presbyterian Church. I have been so privileged to get to spend the last nine years with you. Paul says, I thank my God every time I think of you in my prayers. In a lot of ways, you have taught me to pray. When we gather each week in prayer, whether it's in person or in the comments each week, your prayers have always been offered with such authenticity. We pray for healing, for physical healing, but we pray for more than that. You've taught me to pray for mental and emotional and spiritual healing as well. You are brave in your prayers. You not only pray for healing, but for mental illness and for addiction. You're brave and you confess sin aloud and ask for forgiveness and offer it. You pray for the world. You've taught me to open my heart. And my favorite times are the times where We can't even quite find the words. We stumble around, and somehow by the power of the Spirit, we all understand one another anyway. You have taught me to pray with honesty 
and courage. And you prayed for me. Seven years ago, I came and shared with you that Joseph and I were infertile and that this was breaking our hearts. We had had a miscarriage and we'd had a failed cycle of in vitro fertilization. And you prayed for us. I knelt here in this sanctuary and you laid hands on me. And your prayer gave us strength to continue. The thing about grief and goodbyes is that it can be the impetus to say what we really need to say. To say the things we have meant all along, but haven't always given words to. So I wonder, have I told you? Have I told you how much your support meant to me when our children were sick? In the first year of their lives, Isaac was sick with a respiratory virus that landed him in the hospital for eight days. He was sick with Kawasaki disease that inflamed his veins and arteries, and so he had multiple seizures. And we were terrified. And you prayed for us and fed us and walked with us every step of the way. And not only did we experience physical healing for our children, but I as a mother experienced emotional and spiritual healing in the aftermath of all that fear. Have I told you how much that meant to me? Have I told you what it's meant to me to watch you love each other. It's not always all hunky-dory and love and kisses. We are real people in real community. We bump into one another. We screw up sometimes and we hurt each other. And you have taught me what it looks like for grown-ups to go to one another and say, I am sorry. Please forgive me to offer that forgiveness and be restored to right relationship. You have shown me what forgiveness and grace look like in real time, real community. Have I told you how much that has meant to me? Have I told you how much it meant to me that you loved me through a mental health breakdown. When I did not even know myself, you knew me. And you held space for me. You allowed me to share with honesty and vulnerability and to take my time to heal. And you provided a safe and nurturing community when I so desperately needed one. I hope I've told you how much that means to me. You have been agents of my healing. As Paul said, I'm thankful for all of you every time I pray, and it is always a prayer full of joy. Then he goes on to say, I'm glad because of the ways you have been my partners in ministry. Partners. Ministry is the work of the people. The ministry we have done has never been about me. 
And it's not something that just the elders and the deacons do. It's something we all do together. And you do ministry so well. You live the heart of the gospel. You worship with beauty and reverence and joy. You are intellectually curious. You love learning, and I have been so deeply enriched by reading the Bible with you week in and week out for nine years. You have taught me so much. I hope you believe me about that. You are wise stewards of the gifts you have been given. And your love reaches out so wide. It amazes me. Your love and the good news of Jesus through you reaches out to folks who don't have homes, who don't have enough to eat, who are discriminated against on the basis of their sexual orientation or their gender identity or their class or their neighborhood. Your love reaches out and it's made my heart bigger. We've been partners in ministry. You've taught me how to minister, how to be a pastor. Have I told you that? I hope so. Paul goes on to say, I'm sure about this. The one who started a good work in you will stay with you to complete the job. And I'm sure of that. You know this. Bethany existed long, long before I got to come and join the party. And it will go on for a long time. The DNA of this place is strong. This is a welcoming, loving, deeply spiritual, Jesus-centered, mission-oriented community that is on the move. The Spirit is on the move here. And I am <coughs> certain that the Spirit that has enlivened and sustained your ministry through all of these years will continue into these next chapters. Who knows what they may bring? One of the saints of this church has told me that her prayer is, what next? And I love that. Then as he's concluding this blessing, Paul says, this is my prayer, that your love might become even more and more rich with knowledge and all kinds of insight. As I leave you, that's my prayer for you, that your love might become more and more rich. that you would continue to grow in love, the kind of love you shared with me. The kind of love that you share is the hallmark of the gospel. The gospel is not about judgment or fear or exclusion. It's not about looking like we have it all together. It's about love. God is love. The gospel is about love. The kind of love that makes Bethany, Bethany. You know this. The two great commandments are the love commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. And you live 
those out so beautifully. So I pray that that love might continue to grow richer and richer and deeper and deeper and multiply among you and beyond you throughout this city and in ripples that I believe reach the world. It has been a joy and a privilege to serve you these last nine years. You are amazing. And I love you. As Paul said, I keep you in my heart. Amen. Amen. As I said uh, at the beginning before I sort of fell apart, if you're looking for a church community, you won't find a better one. So I hope you'll reach out if you're worshiping with us for the first time, or the fifth time, or the tenth time. Leave a message on Facebook, and we'll get back to you and introduce you to some folks in the community fold you into our prayer life and our shared life. One of the things I love about this community is how incredibly generous you are. Over 90% of you give to the church. Did you know that? That is astonishing. That is far beyond the average for churches. What that means is that deep inside you've internalized that all that we have and all that we are is a gift from God who loves us, how richly we have been blessed. 
And so we offer back a portion. We give not out of shame or obligation or guilt, but out of gratitude. And so if you feel grateful, and it would be a joy for you, I invite you to give to Bethany. You can do that at bethanytacoma.org backslash give. Not only is this a community of amazing generosity, but as I mentioned, it's a community of prayer. We pray with and for one another. We pray for the joys in our lives and the sorrows. We pray for the things that give us hope and the things that break our hearts. So I want to invite you to share in the comments what's on your heart for prayer today. What's tugging at you? What's giving you life? Let's pray.
the road rise to meet you. May the wind be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rain fall softly on your fields and until Would you pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, may you go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the unending love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit this day and unto your life eternal. Amen. Thank you.